Absolver is the coolest game of 2017. Notice I didn't say best. This is going to be a very subjective video, and you're welcome to disagree with it, but I wanted to make a video to proclaim my love of the game, and hopefully expose it to people who may also find it interesting. Let's get to the meat and potatoes right out of the gate. I would not pay $30 for this game. You should buy this game for $30 if you love fighting games, you love new game mechanics, you love kung fu movies, anime, or anything related to it, you love Dark Souls. And only if you love all four of those. If you're tepid on any of those, I would say $15 is going to be your price point. If you flat out don't like one of those things, then I would say 5 or $10 is your price point. And if you don't like any of those things, the game isn't for you. But maybe this video will help you parse out whether or not you're interested. Absolver is a fighting game that makes you feel like a kung fu master in a way no other game has made me feel. It makes you feel as though you're actually learning. There's limited amount of cheese moves, and you always feel that any time you're beaten, it was because you could have done better, and not because you were simply outmatched by your opponent. Not only does your brain actually get better at timing and countering the more you play, but your character actually gets more powerful as you learn more moves and fighting styles in a rather unique way I haven't seen before in a game. Basically, you start the game by picking a fighting style from three options, Windfall, Forsaken, or Cult Method. All these styles vary in difficulty, with Windfall requiring you to dodge an opponent's moves in all four directions, Forsaken requiring you to parry an opponent's moves in two directions either right or left, and Cult Method requiring you to simply absorb an enemy's move with the right timing and a flick of the joystick. You will be given a set amount of move cards for a combat deck you create, and as you level up, you will unlock more slots to put in more move sets. Once you get all the slots unlocked, you just need moves to put in them. You do this by farming moves from NPCs and other players to learn moves you haven't unlocked by successfully blocking, dodging, parrying, or absorbing their attacks. This is where Absolver makes you feel like you're a student learning Kung Fu. You literally have to get knocked around to get better. Unlocking moves and experimenting with your combat deck layout is incredibly fun. You can try slotting in only quick moves that never give your opponent a chance to breathe, or slot in hammering blows that take time and have to be perfectly timed to land. There are various effects certain moves have like dodging, guard breaking, charging, and charge stopping, and you will find you need to sprinkle these in to give yourself a variety of options. One of my favorite things about how the combat system works is the stance mechanic. Every move starts in one of four stances, denoted by the square at the bottom of the screen, and ends in another stance. To fill out your combat deck, you will need to have moves from all stances and the ability to combo them into the other stances. This gives you the ability to have a 12 hit combo. You are also given 4 alternate attacks, usually reserved for bigger moves or special attacks that you can freely use anywhere in your combo, provided you are in the correct stance for that move to fire off. Or you can get tricky and only have a 9 hit combo that repeats in a cycle, and once your opponent has learned the timing of it, manually switch your stance mid-fight to showcase a 3 hit combo they're unfamiliar with. The possibilities are endless, and toying around with this is perhaps my favorite part of the game. This gives you the ability to have a truly unique 12 hit combo. The campaign itself is very short, like 4 hours short. Once you beat the game, you will then unlock the chance to go back and face the bosses again at higher difficulties, but really the game becomes more about the PvP elements, which include one-on-one -on -one matches, best of five, or 3v3 control point matches. My biggest complaint with Absolver is there just isn't enough of it, but it is still in early access, and it's already gotten some major updates. I think we've got a lot to look forward to, and I'm really excited to see what comes down the pipeline. Personally, I love the 3v3 matches, but matchmaking is a little wonky. Sometimes you can spend 5 minutes waiting for a game, and you're not allowed to do much besides practice your moves while you wait. But here's where the coolness of the game shines through. You will play other players, get beat around like a ragdoll, until you finally come across an equal opponent, and your sparring will feel real. The game gives you an immense amount of strategic choices, as well as mechanical skills you must learn and master to be able to hold your own. There's something more satisfying about getting one up on an opponent that you know is better than you, rather than crushing a weaker opponent 3-0. There are also no words to describe the feeling of badassery you get when you are defending a control point, you see two enemies coming to take you on, and you channel your chi to give yourself a defensive boost as you prepare to face two opponents at once. Or the feeling you get seeing a teammate being ganked as you rush in like a whirlwind smacking enemies around. There will be a moment in this game where you rush into a fight, never miss a hit, never take a hit, and thoroughly destroy someone, and it will feel amazing. I'm focusing largely on the PvP because again, it is where most of the game takes place. 
The campaign is fun and I enjoy the natural feeling of progression I got from discovering new areas, going from barely holding my own against the weakest NPCs to returning much later to find new secrets and being able to destroy them single-handedly. I felt like Afro Samurai holding onto my number two headband, taking on all comers, and working my way up to fighting the number one. Another interesting aspect of the game are the fighting schools. At any point in the game, you can join a school created by another player. The only way to join a school, however, is to interact with someone online, either through PvP or simply wandering around the map. Joining will immediately give you access to the school leader's combat deck and fighting style. And through performing well in PvP while having those equipped, you will unlock more items from the school, like their special abilities and weapon decks. And once you get to a high enough level in the PvP mode, you are able to create your own school for others to follow. This adds another element of coolness, in where you can be completely wiped by a strong opponent, then after the match study their school of fighting and join it if you like. Schools are ranked based on how many people are in it, and are using the combat decks in PvP. When I first started playing, I faced off against a member of one of the higher ranking schools, who also happened to be using my default fighting style, Windfall. And it was a joy to see how best to use my Windfall style with moves that complemented my ability to dodge and slow my opponents. It was unfortunate when I had to decide to leave the school, as you lose all progress within it, but I decided to try and unlock all the fighting styles, and the permanence of losing that made me feel the gravity of my decision. I'm still waiting to come across another disciple of that school, so I can hopefully join it again one day. Even though I've beaten the game, I still find myself coming back to the game constantly, trying to unlock more moves and styles. The aesthetics are great, and I find I really like the mood this game immediately puts me in when I start it up. I would consider it more like a Rocket League game than a Dark Souls game, in that even though the game mode is pretty simple and repetitive, it's immense fun and challenging no matter what. Many players hate how much they suck in the beginning and avoid the PvP, but I find that getting beat around so much just gave me more of a sense of purpose. Like yes, I couldn't win a match my first 10 times, but my first victory felt more satisfying for that reason. You just have to stick with it, get better, and embrace the fact that the game will crush the weak and punish the stupid. It's very Souls-like in that sense. So that's my pick for coolest game of 2017. It's not the best game, but it got me excited for the future of fighting games in a way Mortal Kombat 10 or Killer Instinct can't. I think the combat mechanics are a true revolution, and that we'll begin seeing more fighting games mimic this style of combat instead of the button mashing we've been accustomed to. Rather than learning how to fight against a stock character like Yoshimitsu or Ryu, the game forces you to become your own Yoshimitsu, building out a moveset truly unique to yourself, and you go into every match wondering what moveset your opponent has, instead of immediately knowing you're going to have to avoid Liu Kang's fireballs on the character select screen. In other words, it's really freaking cool. Thanks for watching.